Hi, it's Katrina. From the oldest urban center in South America to a powerful maritime culture who spread art throughout the Mediterranean, here are eight ancient civilizations you've probably never heard of. Number 8. Bell Beaker People the migratory Bell Beaker people, also called the Beaker Folk, lived in Europe's temperate zones around 4,500 years ago, during the late Neolithic and early Bronze Ages. They were named after their drinking vessels, which resembled inverted bell-shaped beakers. This society was particularly warlike and consisted of many bowmen as well as members who carried daggers and spears. They searched extensively for copper and gold, influencing the spread of bronze making throughout Europe. The beaker folk most likely originated in Spain and spread to Central and Western Europe while searching for these metals. In Central Europe, they encountered another civilization, the Battle Axe people, and the cultures became mixed as they continued to spread. They eventually invaded England, where they may have displaced Neolithic farmers. A 2017 genome study revealed that in some places, the Bell Beaker civilization had varied ethnic roots and that they were a mix of people from various cultures, as suggested by the theory that they encountered and blended with other societies as they migrated through Europe. The study also concluded that in other places, such as England, the Bell Beaker people did in fact share distinct genetic ties, leading some experts to believe that they conquered the land from the people who built Stonehenge. Number 7. The Caral Civilization The pre-Columbian Caral society, also known as the Norte Chico and Caral Supe, lived throughout north-central coastal Peru between the 30th and 18th centuries BC. In the desert of the Supe Valley on the coast of Peru, there are six large mounds that look completely natural, but it turns out that these pyramids were made by humans. Evidence suggests that this city flourished while Egypt's pyramids were getting built. It turns out that this place is the oldest urban center of the Americas and one of the oldest in the world. The Norte Chico culture came before the arrival of ceramics and practically didn't have any artwork that we have found, but their architecture was quite impressive. At one point, the Caral people had 30 major population centers. The 5,000-year-old ruins of the city of Caral Supe show that it was once a 150-acre urban complex that contained housing, sunken circular plazas, large earthen platform mounds, and a 92-foot-tall temple. After the city was built, Andean civilizations relied on a similar urban plan for the next 4,000 years. Scholars believe that around 3,000 people lived in Caral Supe at its peak. Researchers have little to go on when it comes to learning about the day-to-day -day lives of the Caral people. Archaeologists discovered large quantities of cotton and later large fishing nets. So the farmers grew the cotton to make the nets, and the society was based on maritime and seafood resources rather than agriculture, which is usually the case for the rise of ancient civilizations. Archaeologists have not found any evidence of warfare at Caral sites, and they believe that they had an organized, sophisticated government that ran the society. Although the Norte Chico people weren't particularly artistic, a geoglyph showing a human face with long hair and an open mouth was discovered in 2000, and evidence of bone flutes indicates that they were musical. They also had textile technology and used knotted pieces called a kipu, most likely for record-keeping purposes. As time went on, Cara grew to 17 pyramid complexes, but then for some reason collapsed around 1600 BC. They were able to bury some of their architectural structures to protect them, perhaps maybe one day hoping to come back. Number 6. The Dilmun Civilization Starting sometime during the 3rd century BC, the Dilmun civilization of the Eastern Arabian Peninsula was an important but lesser-known society than the four cradles of the Old World – Mesopotamia, Ancient Egypt, Indus Valley, and Yellow River civilizations. Unlike those, which were based in river valleys, the Dilmun settled on an island that is known as Bahrain today. This gave them the strategic advantage of establishing themselves as a trading center between the Middle East and South Asia. The island was highly fertile due to its natural springs, despite being located in an otherwise desolate region. Due to its status as a trading hub, the Dilmun Empire was regularly in contact with the Mesopotamians and the Indus Valley civilizations, among others, and at the height of its power, it controlled the Persian Gulf trading routes. According to archaeologists, Dilmun settlements were quite modern for their time and included restaurants and shops, although much remains unknown about daily life. 
There were several population centers on the island, and over 170,000 burial mounds which are still being excavated. The Dilmun civilization played an important role in Mesopotamian mythology, including the Sumerian creation myth, where it was called the place where the sun rises and the land of the living, which may have even inspired the biblical Garden of Eden. Some modern scholars believe that the Sumerians regarded Dilmun as a sacred place. Dilmun's power declined noticeably around 1720 BC and again after 1000 BC as the Persian Gulf became rife with piracy. The empire was ultimately abandoned around 583 BC. Number 5. The Silla Kingdom The Silla Kingdom ruled the southeastern Korean peninsula during Korea's Three Kingdoms period from the 1st century BC until the 7th century. It was founded in 57 BC near present-day Kyungchu by a monarch named Bak Hyok Jios. I hope I said that right. According to legend, Hyok Jios was hatched from an egg laid by a white horse and became a king at 13 years old. How's that for a legend? An egg from a horse. He was the forefather of the Bak clan, which is one of the most common family names in Korea today. Silla was constantly at odds with neighboring kingdoms, but conquered the entire Korean peninsula in 668 AD with the help of China's Tang Dynasty, and ruled for the next three centuries as the unified Silla Kingdom. Silla was ruled by a royal court with an appointed centralized government. A strict social hierarchy defined the rank of everyone within the society. Most of the king or queen's subjects were independent farmers, who were occasionally required to provide military service and labor for government construction projects. The civilization was highly prosperous and possessed some of the most prized gold and gilt bronze crowns in Southeast Asia. Royal tombs were decorated with stone and bronze sculptures and intricately carved gold jewelry, belts, shoes, girdles, and cups, as well as crescent-shaped jade pendants. Silla is also known for its cultural, scientific, religious, and mathematical developments. One of the kingdom's surviving structures, the 30-foot-tall Kiyom Songde Observatory, acted as a sundial and is a standing testament to the society's interest in scientific technology. How's that sound? Number 4. The Moche Civilization The Moche, also called the Mochica, were a loosely linked confederation of societies that flourished primarily in the Chicama and Trujillo valleys of ancient Peru between the 1st and 8th centuries. Their influence eventually spread throughout the northern coast and as far away as the Chincha Islands, located 13 miles off the coast. At their peak, their canals, reservoirs, and aqueducts could support about 25,000 people. Moche territory was divided into two main regions, both linguistically and in other slight ways. The northern section spoke a language called Muchik, while those to the south spoke Kingan. They also differed in their artistic and architectural trends. The Moche were one of the wealthiest and most powerful early Andean civilizations, thanks to their conquest of surrounding territories. Their capital, Moche, boasted impressive architecture, including urban housing, plazas, storehouses, workshops, and monuments. Two of their biggest monuments were a set of massive adobe pyramid-like mounds, which were constructed around the year 450. They had multiple levels, access ramps, and slanted roofing, and were originally bright yellow, red, white, and black. Nearly 200 million individually stamped bricks were used in their construction. The pyramids were used for rituals, ceremonies, and possibly as mausoleums. The Moche were also unique when it came to their vibrant and naturalistic artwork, which included colorful murals, ceramics, and metalwork. Their artwork commonly featured humans, anthropomorphic figures, snakes, frogs, birds, fish, warriors, and shamans. A combination of factors likely caused the civilization's downfall, including drought, expansion of the Huari Empire, and internal conflict. Number 3. The Nok Culture In 1943, British archaeologist Bernard Fadge learned that people throughout central Nigeria had been finding mysterious terracotta pieces for quite some time. He collected over 200 of the items, which dated back to 500 BC, before organized societies were known to exist in West Africa. Fadge realized he'd found evidence of a lost civilization, which he termed Nok. At one excavation site, he discovered 13 iron furnaces that were used to fire terracotta, serving as proof that a dense, settled society existed within the region far earlier than previously thought. Very little additional research was conducted until after 2010, when archaeologists returned to the areas where Fadge made his discoveries. 
they learned that the Nok may have been the first complex civilization in West Africa and the first sub-Saharan society to smelt iron, and that they flourished for much longer than he had thought, from as early as 900 BC until 200 AD. Unfortunately, during the more than 40-year gap in research by archaeologists, many Nok sites were looted and their contents ended up in private hands without being professionally examined. While experts hope to learn more about the Nok, their knowledge is undoubtedly hampered by the loss of artifacts and ruins. Number 2. The Sang Sing Dui The Sang Sing Dui civilization thrived in China's Sichuan Basin for several hundred years during the Bronze Age before disappearing sometime between 1200 and 1100 BC. Most of what experts know about them originates from two excavation pits dating back to the time of their disappearance. In 1986, archaeologists found hundreds of ivory, jade, and bronze objects in the pits. They'd been broken and buried as part of a ritual. The items prove that the Sangxing Jue were quite advanced, challenging the previously accepted belief that sophisticated Chinese societies at the time only existed in the distant Central Plains region. After abandoning the Sichuan Basin, the Sangxing Jue started a new settlement in Jinsha about 30 miles away. Artifacts from this new settlement were discovered in 2001, prompting archaeologists to wonder why the civilization moved after living at their previous site for so long. Scientist Nianian Fan specializes in rivers and noticed in 2013 that the ravines and beds of several waterways near the original Sangxing Dui site appeared as if they once held much wider rivers. He theorized that an earthquake hit the region roughly 3,000 years ago and changed the course of the Minjiang River, the Sangxing Dui's primary water source forcing the society to relocate. The ritual breaking and burying of the objects in the sacrificial pits may not have had anything to do with the Sangxing Dui's decision to flee, archaeologists as Agnes Husu Tang pointed out. In fact, the process was carried out in an unrushed and deliberate fashion, suggesting that it was a customary part of their culture. Experts know relatively little about the Sangxing Dui. No texts belonging to them have ever been found, and they're not mentioned in the known texts of any other cultures. Number 1. The Minoans the Minoans are considered Europe's first great Bronze Age society and one of the oldest civilizations in Europe. They lived on the island of Crete in the eastern Mediterranean Sea and dominated the seas, flourishing between 2000 and 1500 BC. Their economy and power were based on maritime trade and exchange, and they left their mark across the Mediterranean. Minoan society had a profound influence on the Mycenaean culture of Greece and also contributed to the development of modern Western European civilization. Some believe that this is where the myth of Atlantis came from. The culture was noted for its writing system, extensive trade, cities, and labyrinth-like palaces. Art was highly valued and they decorated everywhere with vibrant frescoes and elaborate pottery, and wore stone charms and fine gold jewelry. Their artwork was both secular and religious in nature, often depicting matriarchal deities, maritime scenes, bull leaping, and processions. They had a strong and powerful navy and would take their arts and cultural ideas to port cities to help make other people friendlier towards them, so they were masters of diplomacy. The Minoans were also technologically advanced, as evidenced by the ruins of organized paved streets and water pipes. The name Minoans comes from Sir Arthur Evans, who believed that he had found the palace of King Minos, a mythical king who constructed the giant labyrinth near the palace of Knossos to keep the Minotaur. There were four main Minoan settlements throughout Crete, which all contained labyrinth palace complexes that were up to four stories high and likely served as political and administrative centers as well as trading hubs. Experts aren't entirely sure how all these structures functioned or what their roles were within the island as a whole, but we can guess. One of their functions was as storage facilities for surplus materials like wine, ceramics, oils, grains, and precious metals that they were trading. The palaces were destroyed by earthquakes, fires, and volcanic eruptions before being rebuilt and once again destroyed by the same forces, and possibly by invaders, although we don't really know what caused the end of the Minoans. Thanks for watching! Hope you learned something new today! Were you surprised by any of these? Which one did you like the most? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye.